I want you to uh, turn in your Bibles to Philippians 2. To Philippians 2. And I'm going to continue um, for the remainder of the time. And I'm going to preach, uh, continue preaching from the message series, The Power of the Name. The Power of the Name. We're, we're looking at names and titles of Jesus. Last week we actually looked at the name Jesus. In Hebrew, it's Yeshua, which means God saves. The primary mission of Jesus is to save sinners, to save people from their sins, to give us everlasting life. And today I want to look at the name Lord. The name Lord. What does Lord mean? Philippians 2, I'm going to read 10 and 11. And you probably, a lot of you probably know this, these two verses by heart. It says that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When, when Jesus is confessed and acknowledged as Lord, it brings glory to God. It glorifies God the Father. So what does Lord mean? What does it mean when we acknowledge Jesus is Lord. See, a lot of people just think maybe this is just a part of Jesus' name. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his, it's his surname. <laughs> you know? A lot of people think maybe it's just something that you throw into prayers to make the prayer sound more spiritual. But the name Lord is significant. Lord here comes from the Greek word kurios. In the original language, kurios is translated, original language of Hebrew... Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek. In the Hebrew language, Kyrios is translated Yahweh. So it's the Greek version of Yahweh. And I'm sure most of you have heard the, the name of God, Yahweh. It's the most sacred name of God in the Old Testament. It's so holy, it's so sacred. Orthodox Jews can't even, they, they don't even say the full name Yahweh or write it. They're writing down letters, Y-V-H, I think is what they write down. Yahweh, it refers to supreme deity. It refers to supreme in authority. So when we acknowledge Jesus as Lord, Curios Greek, Yahweh Hebrew, it means that you're identifying Jesus as God, as supreme deity, as Supreme in authority, as one with the Father. See, see, Jesus is God in flesh. You've heard of the Trinity, one in three, three in one. He's not just the one who saves. Yes, he saves. He's not just the one who does miracles, the one who loves everyone, but he's supreme. He's God. He's supreme deity. He's preeminent. He's supreme over all, supreme in authority. So number one in your notes, Lord, your Greek word kurios, and it means supreme in authority. That's what it means when you acknowledge Jesus is Lord. But we need to take it even further than that because in John chapter 20, verse 28, you remember doubting Thomas he doubted that Jesus was resurrected. But when Thomas saw Jesus for the first time and he appeared to him glorified in his, in his glorified essence, Thomas says in John 20, 28, he, he doesn't just say Jesus is Lord. He says, my Lord and my God. He went beyond just acknowledging Jesus is Lord Jesus is supreme deity, supreme in authority. He now, once he saw the glorified Jesus, he acknowledged Jesus is my Lord. See, that's taking it a step further. He's my Lord. He's supreme in my life. He's supreme in, in, in authority in my life. See, see one day everybody's going to confess Jesus is Lord. That's what we read in Philippians 2. Even those who reject Jesus on earth, they're going to confess Jesus is Lord. They're going to see one day. Of course, it's going to be too late to receive him as Savior. But what, but what God is looking for right now 
is, is yes, we want to acknowledge Jesus as Lord, but even further than that, he's looking for you and me to acknowledge him as my Lord. My Lord. See, the question is, we know he's God, he's supreme in authority, in deity, he's preeminent, he's Lord of all, but the question is, is he Lord of my life? Does he, is he supreme in authority over my life? In other words, is there anything in my life that is pushing him down from that place of supremacy over my life? See, that's the question. He is Lord, but is he my Lord? Is he Lord over my life? That's what it comes down to. See, when you acknowledge Jesus is Lord of my life, when we place him at, at the, the right, in, in the rightful place of supremacy, see, see it, changes, it changes how you live. It, it changes uh, it, the, the choices you make. When everything is centered around Jesus is Lord of my life, it, it changes everything. And, and do you know there's a blessing that comes with it? There's a blessing for the child of God when the believer makes Jesus Lord of his or her life. When, when the person comes under the authority, under the lordship of Christ, there is a blessing that comes with it. Acknowledging Jesus as my Savior saves me from hell, gets me to heaven when I leave earth, but acknowledging Jesus as my Lord brings heaven's blessing down to me while I'm still on the earth. Acknowledging Jesus as my Savior gets me to heaven when I leave this earth, but acknowledging and living my life as Jesus is my Lord brings heaven down to me while I'm still on this earth. You see the difference? That's acknowledging the lordship of Jesus over my life. This is confirmed in Ephesians 1.22. Paul says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ, under the lordship of Christ, and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. You're the church of Jesus Christ. See, when we yield to his authority as believers, as the church of Christ, when we come under his lordship, there's a benefit that comes along with it. There's blessing, there's, there's favor that comes along with it. So I, wanna, I actually want to go deeper into authority because to really understand Lord, we really, we, we got to understand authority. And, and we actually need to know the difference between two terms, authority and power. See, a lot of people confuse authority and power. They're not one and the same. Spiritually, they're different. For example... Satan has a certain level of power, but Satan doesn't have final authority. Got to know the difference. Remember, lordship is about authority, right? It's about authority. It's not even about power. Lordship is about authority. Satan has power, but he doesn't have final authority. God has given him a temporary level of power to wreak havoc on planet Earth temporary satan has the power to destroy people's lives he has the power to tempt people he has the power to cause destruction in the world but yet he doesn't have final authority an example is um, football players are powerful you take a big old 250 pound linebacker he's got some power an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, 315 pounds. I mean, there's power. I mean, they could, they'd do some damage to you. And, and, and what's interesting is the players are powerful. Look at the refs. The refs aren't really all that powerful. Usually the refs are middle-aged to older people. <laughs> smaller, weaker, out of shape. The players have the power, but see, the referees have the authority. The 
the players might be able to knock someone down to the ground, but the referee has the authority to throw someone out of the game. The, the referee is the final authority. See, there's a difference between power and authority. Now, before I go further, I'm, I'm not trying to say that Satan has more power than Jesus. That's not what I'm saying at all. The simple fact is, Satan has a level of power, but he doesn't have final authority. See, we know Jesus has all power, but see, all authority is also reserved for Jesus. You know, authority is actually the right to exercise the power you possess. And that's reserved for Jesus. So for thousands of years, Satan has been attacking the lordship of Christ. That's actually the reason why he was thrown out of heaven when he was cast out of heaven. Do you remember? He was, he, he, he's a created angelic being, but he, he wanted to assume the lordship. He wanted, to, to, he wanted the authority, so he set himself up to be worshipped. But God said, uh-uh, the, the authority, the lordship is for Jesus. And he cast him out of heaven. So since Satan knows that he can't physically take the lordship of Christ, the authority of Christ, here's how Satan has attacks the lordship of Christ. Here's how he attacks. He attacks it through you and me. He knows he can't, he, he's, he's legally unauthorized to take the, the lordship, the supremacy of Christ. But see what he does is he, he, he tempts you, he tempts me, he wants us to step out from under the lordship of Christ. The way he attacks Jesus is through us, by tempting us. He doesn't want you to submit to the Lord's authority. He doesn't want you to submit to the lordship of Christ. For believers, his goal is to keep you from being submitted to Christ's lordship and authority. For unbelievers, he don't, he don't even want you to come under, period. Remember, Philippians 2.11 says that, that, that when Jesus is acknowledged as Lord, it brings glory to God. See, Satan wants the glory for himself. He doesn't want the glory to go to God. So he does everything he can to keep us from placing our lives under the lordship of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. He, God, has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. See, there's two kingdoms. There's Christ's kingdom and there's Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. So when, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he set up a counterfeit kingdom to, to bring glory to himself. He set up a counterfeit kingdom so that the, the glory, so that he would take the glory away and the lordship away from Christ, so, so, so it, would, it would come to himself. See, this is the kingdom that the world is under, the kingdom of darkness. This is the kingdom that we're, we're born into as sinners. So in the next few verses, so two kingdoms. So in the next few verses, Paul is, is describing... Uh, the supremacy of Christ, the authority of Christ. Look, look what he says in, in verse 15. He says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything and was created and is supreme over all creation. He, he's debunking the kingdom of Satan. He's saying no, the, king, the kingdom of Christ is the one with the authority. Look at verse 18. He says, Christ is, is also the head of the church. That's us, which is the body of Christ. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. Here's where I'm going with this. When we receive Jesus as Savior, we're transferred out of Satan's kingdom. We're transferred out from under the lordship of Satan. And we're transferred into the kingdom of Christ, the one with all authority. We come under the lordship of Christ. Satan doesn't like that, does he? Remember, he's after the lordship. He knows he can't steal it from the Lord. So he's using us 
He's using us to, to bring damage to the Lordship of Christ. He knows he might not be able to rip you away from Christ's kingdom, but he can try his best, and he does his best to cause us to live our life under both kingdoms, for that matter. <laughs> he tries his best to, to get us to, to come out from under the authority of Christ. Point is, there's, there's Christians out there that are content with living in two kingdoms. There's people, Christians, believers that are out there who you could say want dual citizenship. On Sunday, they're under the lordship of Christ. They're living under the Lord's kingdom. But when they leave the, when they leave the church building... Monday through Saturday, they're living like they're still in the kingdom of darkness. The, the fact is, Satan's really not that concerned if he has all your allegiance. He's just trying to get you to, he's trying to keep you from giving all your allegiance to Christ's kingdom because that damages the lordship of Christ in his mind. He's content with you coming to church. He's actually content with you giving a little bit of money to him, a little bit of time. But, but as, long as, as long as he can keep you living in dual kingdoms, and, and, and as long as you have not completely come under the lordship of Christ, he, he, he thinks, well, I'm winning, I'm winning. They're, they're, they're bringing shame to the name of Christ, to the lordship of Christ. But see, when we're transferred into Christ's kingdom, we are completely removed from the kingdom of darkness. When we're transferred into Christ's kingdom, every aspect of our life is to be lived under the lordship of Christ alone. Period. Our allegiance is to him and him alone. Our allegiance is to his kingdom alone because he's the supreme ruler with all authority. Colossians 3.17 says, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative or an ambassador of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. You know, this means that that our actions, what we do, our words, what we say, reveal what kingdom our allegiance is to. Our actions, our words. He's saying everything we say, everything we do should be as a representative to the Lord's kingdom. What we say, what we do, reveal if Christ is truly Lord of our life. Remember, Lord, acknowledging Him as Lord means all of our life is under His supreme rule. Everything we do, everything we say is under the Lordship, under the authority of Christ. If we're doubting God, if we're doubting His Word, we're out from under His Lordship. If we're speaking words of condemnation, what you say, if we're speaking death, if we're spreading strife, if we're gossiping about, about other believers, well, we're out from under the lordship of Christ. Remember, everything we do, everything we say as a representative of the Lord. If we're living in worry, if we're living in doubt, if we're living in unbelief, in essence, we're out from under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Means, means we're giving Satan authority in our life. Do you know that? Do you know that when you live life out from under the lordship and authority of Christ, in essence, we're yielding the authority to Satan? Do you know that the only authority Satan has over us is the, is, is the authority that we yield to him? He might have some power, but he doesn't have authority over our life if we're under the authority of Christ. So the only authority 
is the authority that we yield to him by stepping out from under the authority and the lordship of Christ. Do, do you see how important it is to living as Jesus is my Lord? This is about authority. When we live all of our life, what we do, what we say under the comprehensive rule of Christ, see, that's when we're blessed. That's when there, there, there's blessing. That's when we experience the benefit that Paul is talking about in Ephesians. The benefit to the church. It's recognizing him as my Lord. Everything we do is under the authority, under the lordship of Christ. I am his ambassador. See, that's what an ambassador, that's what an ambassador does. They represent the kingdom that sent them. We're ambassadors. We're representatives of the Lord's kingdom. One of the main benefits of living our life under the lordship and authority of Christ is, is yes, we're blessed. Yes, we're, we have divine protection. But when we live under Christ's authority, we have access to his authority to exercise over the enemy. That's an amazing benefit in itself. Luke 10, verse 17 is, is, a, is a perfect example of this. Under authority, under the authority of Christ, we get to access his authority over the enemy. Verse 17 says, Then the 70 returned with joy. These are ones, the disciples per se, that Jesus commissioned out. They, they return with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. See, see they've, they've acknowledged him as their Lord. They've, they've brought their life under the lordship of Christ in obedience to his word, in obedience to his command. They went out and they came back and said, Lord, when we speak your name, all of a sudden the demons, they just subject themselves at your name. But, but look at verse 18. Jesus gives them a lesson. Here's, here's why. Here's why. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. In other words, here's, here's, why, here's why they bow at my name. It's because their commander, Satan, tried to become Lord. He tried to take over authority, but he was kicked out of heaven. The authority is mine. The lordship is mine. So when, they, when you speak my name, it means they're coming under my authority. That's what that means. But look at verse 19. So he says, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions now, this is one of those verses that the, the crazy people think, oh, let's handle snakes and serpents and rattlesnakes and, and doesn't mean that. You'll never see me handling a little baby green snake. I am not handling anything that looks like a rubber snake. I don't even want to see a rubber snake. Who's the serpent this is referring to? Come on, y'all are smart enough than, than the snake can. Oh, yeah, hallelujah, let's pull the snake. You're smarter than that, right? The serpent is Satan. He, he's, so so they, they've acknowledged Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over their life. They're going out, they're witnessing, they're, they're declaring the name of Jesus. The demons there are trembling. They're, they're, the demons, they, they, they have power over the enemy. And Jesus said, see, see what's happening is because you've submitted to my authority, I've given you authority to trample over the enemy. I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you because they have submitted to the lordship of Christ and have come under his authority. Jesus is now giving them authority over the enemy. What a benefit. What a benefit that you and I possess when we come under the lordship and the authority of Christ. My last point, number two. 
We access this authority. We access the Lord's authority by yielding our life to His authority as Lord. When we properly align ourselves under Christ, under His Lordship, under His supremacy, under His authority, then His authority becomes manifested in our own life. But remember, the authority is only manifested when we're under His authority. So now do you see why Satan is fighting His Lordship? Why Satan is fighting his authority. Why he, he, he tempts you. He, he, he wants to pull you out from under the authority. He wants you to do life your own way. He wants you to rebel. He don't want you to give your life completely over to Jesus as Lord. He wants to pull you out from Jesus, from the Lord's authority. Because he knows if you get under his authority and you stay under his authority, that means you have authority over him in Jesus' name. He don't want that. When you're under the Lord's authority, the enemy is trampled under your feet. When you get under the authority and the Lordship of Christ, the enemy has to get under your feet in Jesus' name. When you're under the Lord's authority, you can take back in Jesus' name what the enemy has stolen. When you're under authority, you can walk in victory. You can walk in favor. You can walk in dominion. When you're under Christ's authority, when you're under the lordship of Christ, you walk above the enemy. You, you walk on top of the You're above and not below. You're the head and not the tail. You're an overcomer. You walk as victorious when you come under his lordship. And in these last days, when the enemy is wreaking havoc and destruction can you see how important it is to come under the lordship of Christ under the authority of Christ can you see why we need to come under the authority of Christ so that we can walk in authority over the enemy over all this garbage over all this, this junk that, that the enemy's trying to do he's we need to get under authority so that we can walk in authority. He's, he's destroying lives. He's destroying homes. He's, uh, it, 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 there's, there's no reason a Christian should be under the feet of Satan. But that's the problem. Too many Christians are under the feet of Satan. And the reason is because that Christian has refused to come under the Lordship of Christ. When you submit your life, when you come under his lordship, his authority, instead of you being trampled upon, you are trampling on the one who's trying to trample you. Get under authority. That's what it comes down to. The reason so many lives are falling apart is because they are rebelling against Lord. They're refusing to come under the lordship of Christ. Don't expect to walk in authority if you can't get under authority. That means it's crucial that we give up our own way and give into the Lord's way. Don't expect to walk in authority if you can't come under authority. That means I don't always have to have my way. That means I don't always have to get my will let me just let me just have some straight talk to some you you're some good church christians you're some good church folk here today okay just some, just, wouldn't you rather wouldn't you rather us have straight talk than tiptoe around the tulips <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know how to tiptoe around the tulips see that 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 means for, but you're, you're a mature Christian. That means if you don't get your way with everything, that means you don't act like a baby sucking your thumb. I'm going to run home if I don't get my way with every little thing. Even in church ministry. Even in that ministry area that I'm serving, well, I don't like what they're doing. 
that's okay. I, I'm going, I, I don't like what the pastor's doing. I don't like what the board's doing. Blah, wah, wah. Right? You can't walk in authority if you can't come under authority. Do you know that I am under authority? That's what I love about our church. Let me tell you something. I'll, I'll fight you over this church. When, when we're connected as family, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. I don't, like, I don't like when people talk junk about my family. I'm, I'm so, I, I, still, I, still got, I still got a little carnal blood in me when it comes to fighting. That's why I love the way our church government is set up. We have an elder board. Godly people. Dinah is sitting back here. Joe is sitting. Godly people. They are under authority to God, to you, to each other, even to me. We have an executive board. See, the, the, these godly elders help keep me accountable. You want me to be accountable, right? I'm not a real leader if I'm not willing to come under authority and, and be submissive. They keep me in check. They keep me accountable. They, they, they make sure I'm leading well. We have an executive board that, that you vote in. Which, by the way, if, you're, if you feel like this is the church God is calling to you, join the church. Grab a Discover community booklet, read it, see me, call me, call the office, and become a member and come in covenant with the church so that way you can vote leaders and you can, you can be vested in this. You can be a participator rather than just a spectator. Be a participator. Come, come. So we have the executive board. They handle the affairs of the church, the finances, Certain things with the church, they're accountable to each other. They're accountable to you. They're accountable to elders. See, we're all accountable to each other. I am accountable to both boards. Uh, they, we, we're, we're accountable to each other. See, when, there, when there's an environment of submission to authority and accountability, when there's that kind of environment, there's health. There's health. Doesn't mean we don't squabble from time to time. But there's health. There's no, there's no one person that has absolute authority. There's no one board member that has absolute authority. I don't have absolute authority. I know people sometimes they'll get frustrated with me because they might have something that they, they hey, I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this. And if it's a little thing, okay. But if it's a big thing, I'm like, I'd like to talk with the elders. I'd like to talk with the executive board. You mean you can't make the decision on your own? No, because the Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety. I want to be safe. So I go to our boards and we discuss it. Yes, yeah, it might be a little slow. But see, see that's, that's why God is blessing. We don't have debt. We're just, oh, no man, anything but to love because we understand what authority. And if you have a problem with that, it means you have a problem with authority. The point is, that the point of this message is to walk in authority, you have to come under authority. Number one, it starts with coming under the authority, the lordship of Jesus Christ. It's bringing all, everything, all your faculties under the comprehensive rule of Christ. And it also means that you come under the authority of other godly people, that you humble yourself, that you're willing to, to, to be held accountable. That's what we want. That's what we want because, because we have an, an enemy that is at work over time to steal, to kill, to destroy. He's trying to destroy our nation. He's trying to destroy our families. He's trying to destroy our lives. And we need to come under authority so that we can walk in authority over the schemes of the devil. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Yes, he's Lord, but is he your Lord? Is he your Lord? My Lord. He's Lord of my life. I submit myself to, to him. I want to ask you before we sing a song of closing song of worship, let's start with Savior. Have you made Jesus your Savior? He came to earth to save you from your sins. He came to earth to save you, to rescue you 
from hell, from everlasting torment in the lake of fire. That's why he came. See, you got to start with acknowledging him as Savior. You got to recognize you cannot save yourself. On your best, your, your best effort doesn't even come close. You can only receive what Jesus Christ has done for you through his cross, through his resurrection. By grace, are you saved through faith? It's not, it's not of yourself. It's a free gift. Will you receive it? I want to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus as Savior. Would you, would you pray with me now? If you don't know, maybe you maybe you've think you're saved. You just don't know. Well, why don't you rededicate yourself today? Jesus, I know that you died on the cross for me. Just pray that. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for me. Jesus, I know that you shed your blood for my sins. I'm unable to save myself. All of my hope and trust is in you for the salvation of my soul. Save me, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Bring me into the family of God. I want to live my life for you. And I want to pray also for the rest of you. Maybe you know Jesus as Savior, but you haven't acknowledged him as your Lord. Maybe your world is crumbling apart. Maybe things have come at you. Maybe the enemy is after you. Well, let me, the safe space is to run under the Lordship of Christ. And maybe today, this Sunday before Thanksgiving, it's time to rededicate your life under the Lordship of Christ, under his authority. Maybe you've gone your own way. Maybe you've rebelled. See, the good news about the Father is that the Bible says when we come to him, he will in no wise reject us. Even if we're in his kingdom, like the prodigal was in the Father's kingdom, the prodigal, he, he, he left, he left from out from under the authority of the Father. He got himself in a mess. But what was so awesome is the Father was still waiting there for him to welcome him. And it said that, that when the prodigal came back, they, they put a robe over him. That, that's the robe of, the robe of lordship, the, the robe of authority. You can come back to Lord and receive that robe. Come under his authority. Yield to him today. Give him your life. That's the only safe place to be right now in this crazy world is under the lordship of Christ. Father, I just pray in Jesus name that you would that you would stir our hearts, Father. We don't want to just be passive Christians. We don't want to just be passive believers. We, we don't want to live with dual citizenship, one foot in the kingdom of darkness, one foot in your kingdom. We want to be all in, completely loyal to you, to your kingdom. Everything we do, everything we say, we want to do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, whatever you've got to do, Lord, bring us to our knees. Bring us to humility. Help us to get under so that we can walk in authority. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm ask you to stand to your feet and, and they're going to lead us in a song of worship. And, you know, maybe if the Lord's